Spice for Roly. Welcome to Inside Number 23, my podcast which is all about sewing and knitting and my crafty life in general. My name is Katie and you can find me on all of the various social medias, in particular Instagram and Ravelry and Periscope as Miss Lavelli. And we also have a Ravelry group for the podcast, which is just the Inside Number 23 <laughs> podcast group, which you can find just by searching that in the groups tab and Ravelry. And I'm coming to you as always from Hertfordshire, which is just north of London in the UK where I live with my husband Emrys, our lovely, adorable, squishy pug puppy Roly. And in case you haven't noticed, I am exceedingly excited this week because it's autumn! Yay! So it's September, this is our first ever episode in September. As soon as it turns September, I basically go, okay, it's autumn now and it's my favourite time of year. And I love it for so many reasons. I think in particular, I love this time of year because it was back to school time and I always loved going back to school as a child. I liked getting all my new pencils and pencil cases and it's probably why I have such a strong love of stationery even now that I'm nearly 30. <laughs> and I love it when the weather cools down slightly but it's still kind of bright and crisp. We've had a couple of beautiful days so far and I, I'm just very very happy that it's autumn. We've got a lot of exciting things happening this autumn as well because obviously it's going to be my birthday, the end of this month and it's Emrys's birthday. We're going away on holiday, we're going to Disney World in Florida and um, it will be our anniversary. We will have been together for seven years and we have been married for two so all in all it is super exciting we've been getting our pumpkin spice lattes on as you probably saw from the introduction of this video I've been getting lots of knitting done I've been planning for the cold weather and we've also been re-watching some tv we've been watching scream queens recently which I really really love it's so funny in preparation for the fact that the new season of that will be starting soon along with all kinds of other shows that I absolutely love are coming back within the next month. So um, American Horror Story is coming back, Project Runway is coming back and I'm a huge fan of that. It's just a very happy time. And you find me this morning um, drinking some lovely pumpkin spice tea that was sent to me for, by a viewer. Thank you so much. I love it. Ah, the taste of autumn is pumpkin. So yeah, I think we're going to have a really great episode this week because, as you can tell, I am full of the joys of autumn. <laughs> so, as always, I'm going to start off with the administrative stuff right away. We'll get that get that done and then move on to the more creative stuff. But I do have a fair bit to talk about before we get on to knitting and all of that goodness. Um, so, starting off, um, we are still having a sew along. Yay, the sew along, the Hollyburn sew along. I uploaded two different video tutorials this week and I'm hoping to get the majority of the rest of the videos up within the next couple of days or so. So keep your eyes peeled. I do have a thread in the Ravelry group where I share all of the different videos and tutorials that I have been doing so far. So check that out. Or I do have a playlist for the sew along which you can find in my show notes, which are down below or in my Ravelry group. Thank you again to everyone who's been involved so far. It's been amazing and I can't wait to see all of your finished objects starting to come up. 
As that sew along is kind of coming to a close, I have some exciting news and that is that I will be hosting, co-hosting another knit along. I am really, really excited about this knit along. Basically, lovely, lovely, lovely Marsha of the Twitch and Stitch podcast, also known as Fairy Little on all of the various social medias, got in touch with me not so long ago and we have a big shared love of colour work. And it's been a little while since I have worked on a colour work project and um, basically we talked on and off and chatted and we thought it'd be a really really good idea for us to do a cow together so I am excited to say that we will be hosting a colour work cow together basically we will be starting on October 1st and finishing on December 1st and it's any kind of colour work project that you would like to work on is absolutely fine whips also welcome I myself will be working on a couple of whips and it's just gonna be really, really, really exciting. One thing I would say, colour work techniques must be used. So you must be doing something like Fair Isle or Intarsia or mosaic knitting, just kind of striping up um, yarn is not going to be accepted unfortunately and also just using multiple colours in a project so for example doing a shawl that has one section one colour one section another colour unfortunately will not be able to enter into the cowl but there are some incredible um, lovely stranded colour work patterns and you don't have to do something huge you can do something relatively small and the idea is obviously because we're doing whips you can start now if you want to the official start date is on October 1st but you didn't, can just cast something on right now if you feel like it, you know, and then you can give yourself a little bit more time if you're doing a larger project. In terms of what I'm going to be working on, and this is why I'm particularly glad that whips are allowed, is living in my Adelaide Cottage project bag, my lovely drawstring bag that I got from Shauna of Adelaide Cottage. Hi Shauna! <laughs> and in here... This is currently housing a project that has been on my needles for an excessive amount of time. And that is my Boland cardigan. So this is a Susan Crawford pattern, which I absolutely love. And as you can see, it is full fair isle throughout the entire design. And I have so far completed the body and started the first sleeve. So what I really want to do over the time of the cowl is get this out because guys, I haven't knitted on this for, I'm thinking that it's probably about a year, possibly longer, <laughs> that I haven't knitted on this. And the amount of work that I've put into it, I really do need to, to give it some love. And um, yeah, this is what I'm gonna be working on, which is why whips are of course allowed. I'm gonna be finishing this up hopefully, finally getting it off the needles and finally being able to wear it. And I'm really, really excited because obviously look, look at how beautiful it is. And the amount of hours that I spent making this, it would just be a travesty if it didn't end up getting finished. And I'm getting to the point now where I'm not so keen to pick it up because I'm getting excited about new things. So the cow's gonna be great opportunity for me to first and foremost, get this project off the needles. And I can't wait to wear it because it's gonna be amazing. And let's just get excited and knit some beautiful color work things for autumn and winter. <laughs> okay, my lovelies, I have one more thing to talk about before we get on to some more um, fun content. And that is last week, I was lucky enough to be able to do a review for you guys of Stranded Magazine. A copy was sent to me by the incredible ladies at Stranded and thank you so much again. And they were generous enough to also donate a copy of that magazine to you lovely people, my lovely viewers. And um, I had a thread open for the last week asking you what your favorite pattern was from the collection in Stranded and why. And thank you so much to everybody who entered. We had, I believe, 215 different entries when I closed the thread this morning. But anyway, without further ado, I went on to Random Number Generator and I pulled out a random post number and it was post 178 and the winner was Agnes Knit. So congratulations. You are going to be getting a copy of Stranded Magazine. Your comment was, all the patterns are beautiful. My favorite is probably Sky Comish. It's unique, lovely, and practical. And Sky Comish is the kind of hooded cowl. And I totally agree with you. I think it's utterly beautiful and obviously very unique. And I hope you enjoy knitting it because now you're gonna have the opportunity to, is you're gonna have a copy of the magazine. I will send your details over to the 
lovely ladies have stranded and hopefully they'll be able to send that to you within the next week so congratulations thank you again to everybody who got involved in the giveaway and thank you to all the lovely ladies of stranded magazine for sending me a copy because like i said I loved it, so yay! <laughs> right, all administrative stuff done and dusted, it's time to move on to our first segment, which is today, what am I wearing? And in case you haven't noticed, because I know I'm a little bit low in the screen today, I am wearing my lovely featherweight cardigan, so let me hop up quickly to give you a better view. My featherweight cardigan, isn't it just the most amazing thing you have ever seen? I love it and now it's a little bit cooler out I can wear it and I am so happy about that. So the featherweight cardigan of course is a pattern by Hannah Fettig and this is knit in Voolen Vine yarns made by the incredibly talented and wonderful and gorgeous Kristen who also hosts the Yarngasm podcast. Ugh, if I could speak the Yarngasm podcast and this is in her colour Gashley Crumb and it is on her Volca base, which is an MCM Merino Cashmere Nylon base. And you guys, I mean, I talked about how much I love this cardigan when I finished it, but now that I'm actually starting to be able to wear it, I love it even more. It's beautiful, the palette, the color is so nice for this time of year because it's neutral without being kind of boring and it goes really well with so many things. I love it, it makes me so happy and it's just cozy and warm and beautiful. So loving the featherweight cardigan. So moving on from what I'm wearing to my next segment, which is owl puns. <laughs> yes, the owls are happy and I'm happy because again, I have been super, super lucky to receive another parcel in the post this week, which was from lovely, lovely, lovely Nicola, who is a viewer of the podcast. So Nicola was one of the prize winners from a previous cow that we had on the podcast and she got in touch with me recently asking for my address. And when the parcel that she sent arrived, I I genuinely got quite emotional. It was such a lovely, thoughtful gift and it was basically um, a thank you for the prize that she won, which was totally unnecessary, but so appreciated. So thank you, Nicola, so, so kind of you. And I just wanna show you quickly a couple of the fun bits that she sent because they are so cute. So of course, I am a pug mummy. My lovely, lovely pug Rolly is pretty much the light of my life. So how excited was I when um, this is what I found in the parcel? And along with that, I have a couple of coasters, also with pugs, home is where the pug is. I mean, amazing. She knows me well. She knows me well, Nicola, because she um, sent some of my, my new favourites, Milk Duds, which you'll know I'm a huge fan of, so thank you so much. But one of, I think, the loveliest little parts of the gift that you sent me, Nicola, was these minis and the way that they're wrapped, they just look like delicious sweeties. I'm so happy with these. It's all really Harry Potter-esque, which I really, really love. It's so sweet. You've got a lot of Harry Potter colorways in here. There's a Dobby colorway as well. It's just so personal and wrapped so beautifully. And I honestly can't thank you enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I feel absolutely spoiled rotten. Okay guys, it's time for the big meaty juicy part of the podcast, which is of course, what's on my needles? And I feel like I've got quite a lot of knitting done this week. In the same way that I kind of get instantly happy when September comes around, my knitting mojo just skyrockets as soon as I believe it's autumn. And I have managed to get quite a bit of work done on quite a few different projects. So I'm gonna start off this week with the project that was definitely the most worked on last week and somehow it's ended up being the least worked on this week and it's living in my Yarn Cellar Studios Ghastly's bag which you know I all absolutely love and it is of course my Sophie cardigan. I actually stopped mid-round when I was working on this last, which is really unusual for me. I pretty much never do that when I'm knitting. So I'm gonna do my best to make sure that I don't drop any stitches. I haven't actually gone that much further from when I last showed this to you. I've put on maybe an extra inch or so from below the armpits. But as I said last week, I'm trying to spend more time on my other sweater project, 
because that's closer to completion and spending so much time on this, which was a new cast on, was kind of taking time away from that one. But yes, this is Sophie. This is a cabled top-down cardigan pattern by Jennifer Wood and it is absolutely stunning. It has cables, um, kind of lace cable pattern on both sides of the front of the cardigan, down each of the sleeves, as you can see there, and this huge, um, beautiful, delicate, oh, so beautiful, pattern running down the back of the cardigan. I absolutely love it. I'm still completely enamored with it. And the yarn that I'm using was a purchase from Fiber East and is of course the um, the Viola yarn from John Arban Textiles in the Aquarius color. And it's still my precious, precious friend and I love it so much. Genuinely, I cannot get enough of this yarn. Funniest thing was this week, um, my mum actually requested that I cake up her yarn that she purchased from John Arban at Fiber East. Hi, mommy. <laughs> she bought some scarlet skeins of the Knit by Numbers collection in the DK weight, and I caked them up for her and I did not want to give them back because they are so beautiful. And when you're caking them and you feel the yarn kind of flowing through your fingers, it it's just incredible. And I think she's really going to enjoy um, working with it. She's also working on a cardigan. So we're kind of cardigan twinsies right now, me and my mum. And I was a little bit cheeky. I went onto the John Arban website this week and actually ordered the shade card of their Viola collection because I have seen a couple of DK Way cardigans, namely um, the amazing Andy Satterland, who I'm making her Chuck cardigan, has released a new pattern this week called the Blaster in a DK weight, and she has knitted one in this incredible almost neon yellow, and it looks beautiful, but part of me really really wants to get some more Viola and, um, and make that, <laughs> which is naughty I know because I've got a lot of projects on the needles, but I kind of want something special for when we go on holiday. So when I'm on the plane, I have something special to work on. And I think that would be really, really lovely. So I ordered the shade card, which was literally just two pounds. Um, so not expensive at all. And that should be coming this week. And from that, maybe I will pick which colour that I want because I love this yarn and the more garments that I have in it, the better. Bit of a tangent from the actual project itself, but yes, I'm still very much enjoying knitting on this. Fingers crossed I may be able to get a little bit more work done on this this evening. I think it's about time that I spent an evening working on this rather than just popping a couple of um, rounds in at a time. But very much still a fan of my um, John Arban Viola yarn and the Jennifer Wood patterns. Check her out guys, because all of her patterns are incredible. And my next project, leading on quite nicely, as I've already been talking about the incredible Andy Satterland, is of course my Chuck sweater. If I don't get this finished in the next week, I will be incredibly disappointed with myself. Because as you can see, last week I had just started the second sleeve, and now I am this far down. So this is Chuck. Again, you can see a theme, I'm very much into my cables right now, and. I love it. I can't wait for it to be finished. And um, I'm even more excited now, obviously, because it's getting warmer. I mean, warmer, it's getting colder. So I'll hopefully be able to wear this pretty soon. I am on to the second sleeve. And interestingly enough, um, this yarn is Knit Picks in the Aran Waits and it's the Cadet colorway. And as I've said previously, um, this was actually um, knitting from Stash Project because I had completely frogged a cardigan in this yarn to make the chuck sweater. And um, I've now got to the point where I've actually used up all of the frogged yarn and I'm moving on finally to the other, I think I have uh, maybe two or three balls of this left. So I'm actually moving on to yarn now that isn't kind of all re-caked and re-skained. So it feels like a, a brand new, brand new project all over again because I'm new, using new yarn instead of wrinkly crinkly yarn. I keep going on about how much I love Andy Satterland, but I really have the biggest girl crush on her <laughs> that it's possible to have. But yes, Chuck is amazing. I love Chuck. I could very easily, again, see myself making another couple of these. I'm very, very tempted to make a red version, as is pictured in the pattern. If I could have just stolen that red yarn off my mum, but... <laughs> And this is living in my pink hazel project bag, which I really love, my bee project bag. My harlequin bees, as I like to call it. And it makes me very happy. 
I have two more knitting projects to share with you this week, you guys. Um, one of them is an old one, and one of them is a new project. I'm very excited to share that with you, but first of all, I want to show you some progress I've made on my Cozy Memories blanket. And I have added four different squares onto the blanket this week. And here they are. Aren't they adorable? So this one, this lovely um, peachy green, pink, and almost hints of grey in there, was the one that was sent to me with my Yarn Cellar Studios bag, and I think it looks beautiful there. I put it next to this um, neon orange one, and I think they really play well off each other. The next three all came in a little mini yarn set that I got, and I love them. They were all made by um, an incredible yarn dyer in the UK. I believe your name is Kate Celine. Look at these, they are so beautiful. The funny thing is, is that I think that the mini skein um, collection that I was given had a combination of fingering weight and DK weight yarn. So this middle one I think is definitely either a DK or a sport weight yarn. It's a lot heavier than the other yarns that I've put into the blanket, but it doesn't make a huge difference in terms of the size, but it's so much denser than the other squares, which I think is funny. And also the yardage wasn't quite enough for me to get a whole square so I just put a little bit of green at the top here but I think it looks really quite cute um, but I'm loving working with these yarns these colors are incredible and in particular look at this gray it's like a it's like a rainbow like a gray rainbow and I love it it's humongous and I go through phases of picking out my favorite colors this one's definitely a favourite. This burnt orange, so beautiful. And the green, which I was going on and on about the last time I shared this Cozy Memories blanket, but I need a cardigan in this colour. I, I genuinely cannot live unless I have a cardigan in that colour. So it's getting bigger and bigger and squishier and squishier and more and more lovely as time goes on and um, I just love it. I don't know if I'll ever finish it to be honest because working on it is such a joy. This genuinely is the most fun process knit of pretty much anything I've ever made and it's full of memories from people that have sent me skeins and the the different colorways that I've used for other projects and I just I love it so much. I'm so glad that I started one of these even though it's ridiculously addictive <laughs> and um, it does take time away from my other projects, but I don't care because it makes me happy. So one more project to share with you this week, you guys, and it is a new cast on, which I know is naughty, but sometimes you just have to do the things that make you happy. And for me this week, that was having a lovely new cast on. So you may remember last week that I shared with you something that had come in the post from the incredibly lovely and generous Danielle of Mother of Pearl. And I shared with you an amazing colorway that she sent me, which was called Daddy's Little Monster, which is based on um, Harley Quinn as portrayed by Margot Robbie in the new Suicide Squad film. And I was raving on and on about this colorway and how beautiful it was. And I couldn't stop thinking about it. I didn't want to put it in the stash. Lovely though it would have looked in the stash. I needed to get that yarn on the needles. It was, it was not just a want, it was a need. And so this has happened this week. So my initial plan when I thought that I was going to cast this yarn on was that I wanted to try at last, at long last, because I've never done it, two at a time socks. So what I did was caked up the yarn into two equal little cakes. Aren't they amazing? Oh, they're so cool. This colourway is so cool. And I started to do two at a time socks. So just as I have done regularly, you know, doing cuffs and um, starting on the foot and it was just a plain vanilla sock. And then I suddenly realised this yarn is too special to just be a pair of vanilla socks for me. Also, I've been dealing with some real problems to do with sock knitting recently. I've just lost my sock knitting mojo and when I started casting on this pair of vanilla socks I realized quite quickly that even using yarn as beautiful of the, as this it just was not going to cut it for me I was not getting excited about the project I was already getting a little bit bored and so I decided to look through some patterns that I've been interested in making for a while and I came across one and then everything just 
came together and I realised that this yarn was going to be the perfect yarn for this project. And um, <laughs> the pattern that I found and that I'm so excited to share with you was the Jelly Rolls sock pattern and that is by the same person who made the um, free pattern which is the Rose City Rollers that's really really popular um, and her name is Mara Catherine Briner. It's a little shorty sock so they're very very cute. They have a double cuff which rolls down which gives you the opportunity to have multiple colours in one sock. And as you may or may not remember from last week's episode, when I was chatting to Danielle uh, before she actually sent me the yarn, I thought um, if you're going to be doing Harley Quinn socks, it would be really cool if one of them had like a red toe and one of them had a blue toe because that's basically her costume. And so she was generous enough to send me some mini skeins of red and blue um, along with the yarn so that I could do kind of contrasting toes and heels and that type of thing. And the amazing thing about the Jelly Roll socks is that because you're doing this double cuff, you have the opportunity to use more than one colour. So <laughs> I thought what I will do is I will use the red for the first sock. I will do the um, the contrasting colour for the, for the rolled cuff and the toe in the red. And then there is some kind of ribbed detailing in the pattern of the foot of the sock and also along the heel. And for that, I will use the blue. And then when I go to see the second sock, I will change those over. So the blue will be for the cuff and the toe and the red will be for the rib detail and the heel. This is a lot of explanation. I'm just gonna show you what I've done because I think it will make much more sense. But guys, I've got a haul! <laughs> so this is my first Harley Quinn sock and it is, um, I love it so much, I love it so much. And it's, yes, my first ever short sock. I've never made one. And I genuinely think that the short sock may be the thing that makes me knit more socks again. But here she is, this is Harley Quinn number one. And as you can see, I've used the red for the toe and the red for my contrasting cuff. And then the rib detail on the center of the sock and the rib detail on the heel are, um both in the blue. And you guys, I love them. I love it so much. I'm really, really, really happy with them. It's really interesting how the colours in the yarn have kind of changed depending on what I'm working on. Because if you can see at the top here, underneath the cuff, we're getting very much the same pattern as I've got in the body of the foot, which is almost a self-striping uh, because we have the, the reds and the blues together and then we have kind of the speckled natural colour of the yarn with the black and the hot pink and whenever I've been getting these little pops of hot pink it's been making me so happy it's really really funny but then in this part of the foot which is obviously from the heel and then decreasing I've got some really unusual pooling going on so you can see we've got a whole section of red on the underside and then on the top it's pretty much all the natural and I know some of you may not be a fan of pooling but I think it looks amazing <laughs> And they're so much fun. I just think that they're perfect and they've come out exactly as I wanted them to. So I'm gonna be casting on the second one soon. And I will, like I said, be using blue for where we've got red. And then this part and this part will have red in where the blue is. Look at how cool that rib is. Oh, they fit like a dream as well. They just fit perfectly. And in case you haven't noticed, I'm incredibly happy with them. And it was just a really fun project that's got me so excited about knitting socks again. So yeah, very, very happy with these, as you can probably tell. And um, obviously I will keep you updated as to when I have a completed pair. I just love it all. I just love them. I love it, I love it, I love it. Oh, and the other thing that I've loved about this project is that it is living in my Soxetra project bag that was sent to me by my amazing BFF Shannon. So. Shannon, thank you for the bag. I have been using it a lot. I love it and it's currently housing my favorite pair of socks ever. So yay for bags. Ah, <sighs> that was a lot of knitting and I feel like I talked about it a lot. Um, but yeah, you can tell that I've been super into it this week, I think. 
And yeah, I was in a really, really positive place with my knitting and I'm enjoying myself and it all feels great. And autumn is amazing. Autumn brings all the good things. But moving on, I'm gonna do a quick, super quick, um, what would a bookworm do segment for you guys now. And this is kind of a bit of a cheat because I am going to be talking about comic books, but they're books, you guys, okay? <laughs> And yes, I know, I'm terrible. It has been a while since I've picked up a proper um, like novel or something like that because I've been completely and utterly distracted by my newfound love of comics. And I just wanted to quickly do a share with you so that you could understand kind of how much this obsession has grown in the last couple of weeks because it's bordering on ridiculous. And I would just like to thank a couple of individuals for this because of course, the original instigator of all this madness was the host of Pin Feathers and Pearls, the amazing, lovely Candice, who shared um, a comic on her podcast, which is what made me then want to read them. And so thank you, Candice, because whether or not you were aware of it, you were the start of this kind of crazy obsession for me. It's not your fault, but thank you. Genuinely, thank you, because I'm really, really happy. And um, also a couple of other podcasters, Twee from Twisted Stitches and um, Nessa from The Kill craft podcast because your support and love of kind of the graphic novel common comic book genre has also inspired me to buy some other things so thank you ladies please continue to enable me because I really really appreciate it but just so that you're aware of how excessive this um, obsession has become I just wanted to show you a couple of things that I've picked up in the last few weeks so when I podcasted originally about wanting to start reading comics um, I had purchased Suicide Squad, so um, the first volume of that, and Saga, the first volume of Saga. So since then, let's start with Suicide Squad. So I very much enjoyed the first volume, so I decided, of course, if you enjoy the first one, you need to get the second one, and the third one, and the fourth one. <laughs> So I'm currently the proud owner of volumes one to four of the new 52 Suicide Squad um, comics. As I have been educated by Melinda, so thank you for your comment Melinda, um, of the um, Yonder Woman podcast, these are called trades, I believe. I'm really sorry if I'm getting this wrong. Um, and they are comics, these are trade editions of the comics, volumes one, two, three and four. And I'm obsessed with them, I love them really really enjoying um suicide squad you'll see this is getting ridiculous obviously i had volume one of saga and um while i was kind of out shopping on a lunch break just picking up a couple of snacks i found volume two so i now have volumes one and two of saga saga is amazing you guys i i want all of the volumes i'm trying to pace myself I'm literally kind of buying a volume when I finish the one previously rather than just buying all of them in bulk. So you can tell the amount of Suicide Squad I've been reading. But yes, I now have volumes one and two of Saga. But on top of that, I have also purchased some brand new um, <laughs> comics that I don't really know all that much about, but they've either been recommended to me or they're kind of directly related to comics that I've been reading. So about Suicide Squad, I realised that the parts of it that I really, really enjoyed were everything about Harley Quinn. You know, you can tell from my socks, I'm a Harley Quinn fan, I like her as a character and I enjoy reading about the things that she does. So it was just a matter of time before I purchased volume one of the Harley Quinn comics. And um, this is again, New 52, Harley Quinn. I have not yet read this, but I'm very excited to because I'm a big Harley Quinn fan, like I said. Nessa of the Kiltercraft podcast actually commented on one of my first Instagram posts about my comics that she was interested in reading Lumberjanes. And I looked this up online and it looked really, really interesting and really fun. And while I was kind of browsing through our local Waterstones, what did I find but volume one of Lumberjanes. I have started this one, I've read the first comic and it's really funny and kind of silly and great and I also appreciate the fact that it is an entirely um, female set of characters who are all adventuring together so I'm really really enjoying this one so far. So thanks Nessa for pointing me in the right direction again. So yes, Lumberjanes, very very big fan. And then completely out of the blue whilst kind of purchasing some other comics, um, mostly another edition of Suicide Squad and the Harley Quinn volume, the Harley Quinn trade that I purchased, I saw this. 
and this is called The Wicked and the Divine and it has come very highly recommended. A couple of people have said that they've read it and enjoyed it but I have also seen it in Forbidden Planet and in other Waterstones as kind of a promoted set of comics. I don't really know that much about it but at this point I'm just wanting all of the comics and I want to read everything and so this one looked really pretty cool. So I'll let you know how I get on with it. But yeah, you guys, this has happened recently. These are really quite heavy as well. And um, I'm just really enjoying them. So as I said before, when I started talking about this, um, it's really nice to find something new and interesting and creative in a different medium that I've never experienced before that I am enjoying so much. So thank you ladies to everyone who has steered me in the right direction when it comes to comics and graphic novels and oh, I can't wait to read all of these. And I am hopefully within the next couple of days going to be buying a new bookcase to start being able to store these properly in a really nice pride of place position in the house. So yay for my comics, yay for them all. And I'm gonna put them down now because they're really heavy. <laughs> Okay guys, I am excited, really excited to be able to tell you that this week, for the second time ever, we will be having another Reviewing the Situation segment, which is my new reviewing segment. So last week, like I said, I had reviewed Stranded Magazine, which was really, really kindly sent to me. This week, I'm going to be reviewing another magazine, which is brand new, hot off the presses, and it is called Filament magazine. Now this magazine was sent to me by the amazingly lovely Anne, and forgive me Anne if I mispronounce your surname, I believe it's Poldelsack. And I know Anne because she is the creator of Willy Wonka Fibres, and she's actually been kind enough to donate a prize to the podcast in the past, so it was lovely to hear from her again. Basically she got in touch to say that her and a good friend of hers, Kathleen Dames, um, have got together and have started a brand new magazine and it is new for fall 2016 and this particular edition is a 1930s inspired collection of patterns which encompasses four sweater patterns and four kind of accessory sets and patterns. It's really two like-minded people, two similar souls finding each other through the medium of the internet and Ravelry and realising that they had so much in common. So both Kathleen and Anne share a love of kind of vintage, historical inspired things. Obviously they're big knitters, but they realised that through just meeting by chance that they had so much in common that they wanted to put all of that creativity and similarity into one place and that's where Filament magazine came from. And I think that it's really obvious from the collection of patterns that are included here that every one of them has thought behind it, has a story to tell and is coming from a real place of passion and love which is really really lovely. So aesthetically this pattern collection, because that is essentially what this magazine is, a collection of patterns, it is absolutely beautiful. It is very, very delicate, very classy and very classic. Every one of these patterns has been shot in a way that just makes it look clean and stylish and beautiful. The real emphasis is on the timeless nature of each one of these patterns, which is obviously inspired by something or in some way from or by the 1930s, which I obviously think is awesome being a big, big vintage fan in terms of pretty much everything that I do. The great thing about this pattern collection is that everything has been done by either Kathleen or Anne. So they're both editors, but then one of them styles, one of them photographs, and the collection is entirely 50-50 by both of them. So two sweaters and two accessories by Anne and two, two sweaters and two accessories by Kathleen. So it's like this perfect partnership between the two ladies and yet the whole thing feels incredibly cohesive as one collection with one thought and one message in mind and I just think it shows that their friendship is really strong and just their partnership as creative people is flawless. 
So let's talk about these patterns. I'm gonna start with the sweaters because you know I'm a huge sweater fan. First off was one by Kathleen, which is called Beaten. And it is a bottom up seamless pullover with a shawl collar. And you guys, this is so gorgeous. I mean, you can see the picture straight away and you know why I love it. Cables, 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 cables. It's beautiful. The cables in this are incredible. And I just think this would make the most amazing winter sweater. I can't say anything bad about this sweater basically. Um, next up is a cardigan, it's called Bittersweet and again it's bottom up seamless but it has this beautiful twisted stitch in the yoke so it's very delicate, very feminine and it's just really really sweet. I can see this one being a favourite for a lot of you guys because it's relatively simple, it looks like it would knit up quite quickly but it does have some real interest with the really really delicate um, patterning around the yoke. The next two sweaters are by Anne. The first one is Claudette, which is again a cardigan, but this one is top down. And it has this berry lace motif that goes throughout it. I think from the first picture that you see of the pattern, it looks relatively simple because you get the front view of the cardigan. So it looks like it's plain stocking net with pretty much just a little bit of lace detailing around the cuffs. But when you see the back shot of the cardigan, I can't entirely tell from the photos, but it looks like this lace motif may go down almost the entire back of the cardigan, which I think looks really, really lovely. Plus I'm a big fan of the color. I think the color is gorgeous. And the last sweater included is the Lombard sweater, another pattern by Anne. Again, a bottom up seamless pullover. So it's that construction that we all enjoy. I do love knitting seamless things. <laughs> and it has this really pretty chevron patterning that goes down um, the front of the sweater. All of these sweaters are the type of things that are going to stay in style for a very, very long time. They're not faddish. They are just classy, feminine, beautiful garments. And I think that's what's lovely about this collection is how timeless and effortless it is. There are two patterns which are sets, so matching things. So you have Bonnie, which is another Kathleen pattern. Um, it's a gloves and tam set and they have this lovely um, chevron detailing down them and they are so cute. I really, really like them. And the other Kathleen pattern is called Rumble Seat. And this is a cowl and mitts set, which has this incredible kind of textured pattern to it. It's called cluster stitch and it just looks really squishy. I genuinely just wanted to grab it and squish it. So that matching set is also lovely. The other two accessories are both by Anne. One of them is a top down triangular shawl, which is called Copperfield. And it's really, really lovely, knitted in sections and it is kind of alternating a double moss stitch and um, a wheat sheaves stitch to create this real interest in the different sections of the lace. And it's really pretty. Again, I'm a huge fan of the color. All of the colors that were picked for this, um, for the particular um, samples are really lovely and they work well together. The last pattern is called Milkweed and it's a socks pattern. It's a beautiful textured, lacy sock. It's a top down sock, so cuff down to toe. And I just think, again, it's gonna be something that a lot of you would really, really enjoy knitting. Something that's really gonna show off a solid or kind of slightly variegated color of yarn with this beautiful textured pattern. It looks like it would be a really nice part of an autumn wardrobe. And it's just really pretty. The final section of the magazine is just um, broken down into stitch abbreviations and that type of thing. And that is basically the whole magazine as it is. So in terms of the way that the patterns are, like I said, I'm a huge fan of the photography. I think everything has been styled beautifully. And considering that the collection is split down the middle in terms of who designed, so we've got two different voices, they do really speak together as one. And I appreciate that the collection feels really cohesive. And like I said, it's so stylish and classic. I also like that in the pattern details, um, each of the patterns states exactly which size is being worn by the model and um, kind of the amount of ease in the garment. So for example, it'd be like, this is a size um, 36 inch chest with no, knee, no ease whatsoever. So it gives you an idea of how the garment will fit you and also whether or not you would like to have negative or positive ease in the way that you knit it, which I think is such a lovely detail. 
The magazine is available as a hard copy, which is available on the Filament website, which is knitfilament.com. In dollars, the prices are $23.95 for anyone from the US, $26.95 for anyone in Canada, and if you are overseas, it is $31.95 to purchase, and that does include shipping of the magazine as well. If you're wanting to purchase it on Ravelry, just as an ebook, which is the copy kind that was sent to me, which I can say is a really, really lovely ebook. So if you're not necessarily wanting it to be in a solid copy, you can purchase it from Ravelry for $25.20, which I think is a great price considering that you're getting eight patterns. Although technically it would be 10 patterns because two of those patterns include two different items. And I think that's a great price for what you're getting. When I was looking at the patterns and I wanted to kind of pick which of my favorites, I think if you know me, you'll probably be able to know which ones I picked as my favourites. And the first one is the um, beaten sweater, the cabled sweater, which I'm completely and utterly in love with. And I think is beautiful and would be a staple, a beautiful staple for anybody. And also the Bonnie set, which is the Tam and the Glove set. I loved these and... I pretty much want to knit them up straight away. There's a pattern in this collection for everyone. I really, really do believe that. And I just want to congratulate both Anne and Kathleen for creating something so timeless, so delicate and beautiful, feminine and classic. I can't wait to see what you next produce in terms of Filament magazine. So I hope that you've enjoyed hearing about this new magazine, you guys. And I think that you would be happy to know that Anne was generous enough to also provide an e-copy of this magazine for one of you guys. So that means, yes, you have the chance to win a copy of the first ever edition of Filament magazine for fall 2016. And all you need to do in order to be eligible to win that is subscribe to my channel down below, hit subscribe, head over to the Ravelry group, join my Ravelry group and then go to the filament giveaway thread where all I want you to do is post an answer to the question, what is your favourite thing about autumn? Because let's be honest guys, this has been an incredibly autumn filled and autumn loving episode. So tell me what your favourite thing is about autumn and next week I'm going to announce the lucky lucky winner of Filament magazine. I think it's a beautiful magazine you guys so do head over and get involved with the giveaway and thank you so much again to Anne for getting in touch but to both Anne and Kathleen for expressing your friendship and your incredible creativity in such a beautiful and timeless way. I'm a huge fan of Filament magazine. It's getting a massive massive thumbs up from me. Whew. A lot of talking this week, you guys, a lot of talking. So to close up, I'm kind of going to do something a little bit different with General Waffle this week. General Waffle, have to put it in there, have to, I just love that so much. <laughs> but instead of having a little waffle on, what I'm going to do to close up this week's episode is just share a little bit of autumnal adventuring with you guys, of me and my lovely husband Emrys and Rolly having a little trot about where we live. I just thought that'd be fun, be a little bit different and kind of just stop you being overwhelmed by the amount of talking that I've been doing this week. So I'm going to pop that in at the end of the episode for you to enjoy. If you've enjoyed the video, please like it, give me a thumbs up, please subscribe to the channel. Um, on average at the moment, I'm posting around about two videos a week. So being subscribed is always the best thing to make sure that you're given a notification as to when there's something new on the channel. And I do have a lot of really fun plans for some interesting new stuff to be coming your way soon. So subscribe right now would be a very good thing. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have an incredible week filled with autumnal goodness. Or of course, if you're heading into the hotter months, I hope that you're enjoying that as well, depending on where you are in the world. But from me right now, I'm sending you all so much love, happy sewing, happy knitting, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!